Hello, this is Aaron with iBoard Repair, and today I'll be recovering data from a flat dead iPhone 15 Pro. And uh, this customer reported that nothing happened to this device, he just woke up and it was dead. It wasn't water damage, he didn't drop it. He took it to the Apple store and they said that it has a damaged motherboard. So I haven't done much to this device yet, but let me show you what I found so far. So I've already removed the screen. And I've taken a look at this motherboard and it does confirm, you know, there's not much damage or any damage that I can see. There's no water damage or no signs of any breakage. And the first step I take when I'm working with a dead phone that's not showing any life is to take my DC power supply probes here and touch them to the battery connector and prompt the phone to boot by pressing the power button. And we could keep an eye out here on my DC power supply. I'll press the power button now and we see a very large spike. So that spike to 0.9 is very abnormal. It should be nowhere near that. It should be closer to 0 0.09 if anything, or even lower. So to me, that indicates I have some power rail short on here and it's gonna be a major one. So it might be like RAM possibly, or like 1v8 or something like that. I have no idea yet, but I'll take this motherboard out of this housing now and uh, we can diagnose it further and start measuring some of these lines. Okay, I have this motherboard out of the housing and I want to continue with my idea that I believe there's gonna be a shorted power rail. So I need to identify where they are and start measuring them with my multimeter. And I should find a full short to ground somewhere. So here's my iPhone 15 Pro motherboard. I'm afraid I have a RAM short, like 1 vas 2 Let's see if I can find a spot to measure that. Probably right here, right here should be fine. This is my 1v1 line. This is underneath the shield, so it won't be easy to measure unless I pull that up. And OV5, oh, this was OV5. This used to be OV6. This is also underneath this shield. I think I'll go ahead and measure this line first because it's exposed, probably right here actually, my 1v8 um, S2, which is my SDRAM line. And if not that, uh, let's see if I can find any NAND power rails. So 2v6 line will be smart to measure. I would expect my NAND power rails to be uh, not so high of an amperage draw if they're short, but it's still worth it to check just in case. Here's my 1v2 line, and I should have an OV9 as well, OV83. So I can probably, I'm not sure if I have a shield here, I think I do. I'll have to pull this up to measure the NAND, but first I'll go ahead and measure this 1v8 line, and let's see if we find anything there. So I'll set my multimeter to diode mode. And I'll measure this line. And this line is good. So I'm glad to see that, I didn't wanna see a problem under RAM. I'm going to go ahead and pull this shield up next so I can measure NAND. After that I'll probably pull this shield up so I can get a few more power rails and if I still don't find it I'll have to split this motherboard and uh, start measuring around the PMIC. So here's my 2v6 line, measures good. My 1v2 line, measures good. And my OV8 line, all measuring good. So that's fine, I think I'll go ahead and pull this up so we get more access to some lines to measure.
So I'll have access to a lot of power rails now. Let's see if I can find anything. I think I'm just gonna like rapid fire measure these and look for a full short on any of these capacitors real quick. See what that is. I I think that's my RAM power rail. Point zero one. So this is what I was measuring. It was point zero one, and it might be normal. In fact, I do believe it's probably normal for that line to be that low. Um, let's see if we have Dowd mode measurements underneath the PMIC. If I zoom. I do not, unfortunately. Let's see if ZXW gives me them. We do get diode mode measurements under the PMIC with ZXW, so that's good to see. It was this line here, I believe. No, this one. And if we zoom in on the PMIC, we can see a 0 0.04. So that's a little bit higher. I had 0 0.01, but it's close enough that I'm going to go ahead and assume that my measurement is okay there. This is the OV6 line right next to it, so I'll measure that next just to see. That's almost 0 0.02 as well, so it's pretty, I think it's okay. And 0.12 should be normal on uh, the OV6 or OV5 on this model, I guess. So let's just keep on measuring, see what else we can find. Some of these CPU power rails are going to be low resistance lines and they're going to give me a very low reading and I'm not too worried about it. I'm more looking for a full short right now. Point zero 0.06 is very low but it's probably PPGPU which is always very low. Also, I should probably mention we are going to be working with a secondary power rail um, as opposed to a primary. Um, a primary power rail would most likely show up as a amp draw before I prompted to boot, so before I press the power button. In this case, the amp draw doesn't show up until after I press the power button. So it's a secondary rail that we're working with. And I'm not seeing anything, so I'm going to have to go ahead and split this motherboard apart now and get a look at the more inner components. So I'll remove this little screw here and then I'll put this onto my hot plate and uh, we can pull these boards apart. So I'll go ahead and wait for this to heat up and then I'll pull it apart once it's ready to go. So far it looks pretty good. I was almost expecting to see a cracked PMIC or a cracked CPU and I can't see that yet. So that's good. Let's, uh, I'm just going to measure all of these capacitors around the PMIC and still look for a full short. That's quite low, but I believe that's my PPGPU line. There we go, found something. And this capacitor actually looks suspect itself. It's a little bit grayed out on this side. And that's a great thing to find. 
I have a feeling that this capacitor right here is short. Let's see what line this is. My 1V2S4 line. Provides power to a speaker amp. Provides power to whatever this chip is. I'm not quite sure what this is. This might be wireless charging possibly. So if you can notice, this side of the capacitor looks gray in comparison to like the ones next to it. So without even like injecting any voltage, I think I'm just going to remove this capacitor because I very much suspect it's bad. If I take my multimeter and measure the line again, let's see if it's still full short or if it's changed. And there we go, it's not full short anymore. Point 0.25, I'm sure that's a more normal reading. And that should be the only problem on this board. So as you can see, sometimes it's a simple shorted capacitor and you just have to track down where that capacitor is and once you remove it, this whole phone will work again. Um, if I reball the interposer here, um, this phone should just work completely normal again. It's undamaged besides this. Um, but this is for data recovery first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this into a jig and take the data from it primarily. And then afterwards, I may go back and try to put this together to give the customer a working phone. But let's put this in the jig, make sure it's booting and make sure we have access to the data. I have my proximity flex attached. I'm sorry, my wireless charging coil flex attached. Here's my proximity. So everything's attached, let's plug it in and see if it prompts to boot, if it turns on. There we go, we have an Apple logo. I'll make sure it takes the passcode. The only reason it wouldn't is if it had NFC problems and this was an NFC power rail as well but I don't expect any issues here. And we're into the phone. So this is working. I'll be able to pull data from it. And this is not too difficult at all. This was just a shorted power rail and I was able to uh, know to check that just by looking at my DC power supply amperage draw after I prompted it to boot. I saw that it was very high and I noticed that it was after I prompted it to boot. So that tells me that it was a secondary power rail instead of a primary power rail. And that put me on the path to what I was looking for. Once I saw that grade capacitor, I knew after, especially after measuring that it was short, that that was almost surely going to be the culprit. And removing that allowed this phone to boot and my customer is going to be very happy. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Hope you stop by again. Bye-bye.